All right, so the next piece that we're going to cover in our special senses lab is the ear. So we're going to take and go through uh, some of the general purposes of the ear, and then we'll get into a little bit more physiology and function. Uh, but the ear is basically divided up into three main regions. We have what's known as the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Right? So three main regions, right? Outer. What is found in the outer ear? The outer ear consists of your ear lobe. And so the ear lobe is also called the auricle. And we'll see that with the heart as well. There's an external covering on the heart, uh, on the atria of the heart, which are called the auricles, right? So we're going to hear this term again, right? So external covering um, of the ear, right, is going to be the auricle. Uh, the lobe down here is actually called the pinna, right? But the auricle and the pinna make up our ear lobe. Uh, the main purpose of that is to help direct sound waves in. They kind of look like they kind of act like big radar dishes uh, to help direct sound waves down into the second part of our outer ear, which is the ear canal. So we have the lobe and the external canal. Come on. So the earlobe and the external canal, external, external auditory meatus uh, was something that we identified on the skulls when we looked at that in the first semester of class. So uh, that basically makes up our external ear. The second portion is called the middle ear. Right, so the middle ear, pen is really wonky today. Uh, the middle ear few things that exist within our middle ear. We first have what's known as the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity. Um, so tympanic is, uh, I always think of our eardrum, right? The tympanic membrane is our eardrum. So anytime you hear tympanic, you think middle ear. Uh, and so here we call it the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity is just this section here, and within this section, what do we find? Well, we find our eardrum, right? What's the more technical name for our eardrum? Here is the tympanic membrane, right? So TM, right? Tympanic membrane is going to be our uh, our eardrum, and so is it sound waves come in through that external ear, they get channeled down through the ear cavity and strike that tympanic membrane. And what we want it to do is vibrate. Um, that tympanic membrane or the eardrum we can see is connected to one, two, three separate bones. So let's sort of erase some of this right now. Uh, we have one, two, three separate bones. The more technical names for these are the malus, the incus, and the stapes. Right, so the first one uh, the malice is also known as the hammer. It kind of looks like uh, a ball peen hammer, right? So a nice round end on the hammer coming down, and the handle is attaching to our tympanic membrane. So the malice is going to be our first one, malleus. The second one is an anvil, right? More technically, it's known as the incus. Uh, and this one literally looks like a blacksmith's anvil. So it kind of makes sense with the head of the hammer coming down on top of the anvil, right? So malice. Incus. And then our third one is the stapes. Uh, the third one is the stapes, also known as the stirrup. Uh, and this one looks just like a stirrup for a horse's saddle. Um, so you can see where you would be putting your foot uh, within that stirrup there. Right? Those three bones together are collectively known as the ossicles. Right? The ossicles, um, the malus, the incus, and the stapes, right? going in that order. So attaching from the eardrum, we can go to the malus first, malleus, then the incus, and then our stapes. So those three bones sit right within our middle ear cavity. Right? The last piece that we find within our middle ear cavity, or attaching to our middle ear cavity, is the eustachian tube, is what it says here. Another term for that is called the pharyngeotympanic tube. A uh, big mouthful of a name, but what that does is it talks about the two areas that it connects, right? We know tympanic references our middle ear. Pharyngeo, right? Your pharynx is your throat, right? So your throat. So what we do is we connect the middle ear cavity to our throat. The biggest thing that this does is it helps to equalize pressure on either side of the membrane. Right? So um, 
We've experienced this if you've gone up in an airplane. As you go up in altitude, as you go higher and higher and higher in the sky, the air pressure around you starts to decrease. So if we decrease pressure on this side of the membrane, and the pressure in here were to remain the same, what we would then see is a difference in pressure. You have a very high pressure over here, very low pressure over here, and that eardrum would actually bow out. Right? It would be like blowing up a balloon. There's higher pressure inside the balloon here to fill it up. So uh, it would push the eardrum out, and if that pressure difference got great enough, it could actually rupture the eardrum. So we want to be able to equalize the pressure on each side. How do we do that? We connect our middle ear cavity to our throat, to our pharynx. Our pharynx is open to the external environment. It's connected to our mouth, open to the external environment. So as you yawn, it opens up the end of the tube here down in our throat, down in our pharynx, it allows the pressure to then escape out into the external environment and equalize the pressure on either side of the membrane. Okay. Uh, so it's a pretty neat little thing. Uh, the other thing is in order to hear properly that tympanic membrane needs to vibrate. If you have unequal pressure on either side of that membrane, the tympanic membrane is not going to vibrate as properly. And so again, you can kind of notice that if you ever go up into an airplane, up in an airplane as that pressure goes, and if you don't release that, it almost sounds like you're underwater, right? There's um, The sounds are all muffled. The reason that they're muffled is because that tympanic membrane is not vibrating properly. Right? So that finishes off our middle ear cavity, our middle ear. And so our last one is the inner ear. And I think I have a better picture of the inner ear here. Yeah, this is a good picture of our inner ear. So what we can see here is our stapes, the last part of our middle ear. And the stapes attaches through a small little hole in the bone here on into our middle ear. It's uh, connected to our middle ear. The inner ear here is actually surrounded by bone. Uh, and so we call it the bony labyrinth. It's a, a maze of tunnels within our, uh, within our temporal bone. Uh, moving sort of uh, lateral to medial, the three pieces that we find within our middle or within our inner ear are these things called the semicircular canals, the vestibule, which is this area right here, and then the third one is the cochlea. So this piece here that looks kind of like a snail shell. Right? Those three pieces together, so vestibule. So semicircular canals, the vestibule, and our cochlea are the three things that actually take and make up our inner ear. Right? So it's a network of tubes uh, which are then encased in bone. The last piece that we can see here is the nerve uh, which goes up to our brain. This is actually cranial nerve number eight. So if you remember when we did the brain and we did the cranial nerves, cranial nerve number eight was our vestibulocochlear nerve or our auditory nerve. Vestibular cochlear nerve, you can see that it actually comes in and splits. One piece goes to the vestibule and the semicircular canal, so we're going to call it the vestibular nerve or the vestibular portion. And the second branch of that goes to our cochlea, so we call it the cochlear nerve or the cochlear branch. The two of those together combine and head out of the inner ear cavity up to our brain as cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve or our auditory nerve. I'm going to take a break here and then we will uh, talk a little bit more about the different pieces of the inner ear and their functions.